Hey guys, what's up? Dutch Texan here. Next to me is the Corvette Ben. Subscribe to him because he's a YouTuber just as I am, only he's more awesome. And today we're going to review this C4 Corvette. Oh yeah. Right now we are in a 1985 C4 Corvette. Now my personal opinion about the C4 Corvette is kind of so-so because this is the car that replaced the, in my opinion, most awesome Corvette ever, <laughs> the C3 Corvette. The thing is a lot of people probably thought the same way. It's such a departure from the C3, but there's another positive thing about that. Next to the looks that changed, the engine changed. So in 1984, the Corvette C4 came out with an L83 engine. Now, back then, it made 205 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque. Then 1985 rolled around and they changed things up. They introduced the L98 engine, changed up the fuel injection system from the crossfire injection to the, to the port injection, and we ended up with 230 horsepower and 330 pound-feet of torque. So that's a whole lot more power from the same displacement because it still displaced 350 cubic inches or 5.7 liters. liters exactly for all us metric folk. Now, of course, this is a manual transmission car and there's something odd about this. The EPA got his fingers in everything and also in this manual transmission, you have this button on top of it that if you press it, it'll engage the overdrive. So it's a Doug Nash 4 plus 3 transmission, which pretty much means that first gear is just first gear, second gear, third, and fourth all had overdrives. Some kind of weird EPA thing, but you know, it worked back in the day. Nowadays though, 30 years down the line, most of those transmissions, including this one, that overdrive function will no longer work. Now if we talk about the interior on this car real quick, the DigiDash is freaking awesome. I love it. There's a bunch of different modes that you can do and you know, it's just decidedly 80s. When you come down to the seats, they hug you. They really do. And getting in the seats is kind of a challenge, but you know, it holds you perfectly when you're doing some hard cornering and they're very, very comfortable. So yeah, you might feel like an old guy getting in and out of the car, but it's... Look like an old guy getting in and out of the car. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because in the end of the day, you're driving a Corvette around and it is grand. Now we're gonna come up on a little spot over here that hopefully if traffic clears up ahead, I can open up the taps a little bit and see how much of that 230 horsepower we can use. This transmission, though, shifts kind of clunky, but that's the way it is. It's mechanical. It's not as much a single linkage as the ones that we are all used to. And we're going to have to wait. So the, the five and six speed transmissions that everybody is used to, they have what they call internal linkages. So all the linkages are inside the transmission. If you ever see a picture of one that has a tail shaft and then has a shifter that sticks right up, you bolt it in and it works transmission. This one's different. If I took the side panel off on the, on the side, you would yeah. see three rods coming from the shifter that go to the transmission. So it's basically like the middle between old school four speeds and automatics and new school five speeds and six speeds. So it's like the bridging the gap since it has an electronic overdrive component to it. And most of the time when people, when these cars were new, they said you could put overdrive in second, third, and fourth. The way it would work is, you know, you shift in a second normally, then you push the clutch pedal in again, push the button, and then it'll drop your RPM without moving the stick. You do the same thing for third and fourth. What most people did is they just rode through the gears like a normal transmission, and then when they get on the highway and, you know, they want to, you know, coast 75 miles an hour, then they put it into overdrive in your fourth gear and they wouldn't bother with it. You know, I mean, shifting all those times in a clunky transmission like this, you just put it in fourth gear and you're done. All right, here we go. It goes pretty well. 
still, I'm surprised, you know. Remember, Every, 1985, 1985. 1985, <laughs> you know. It doesn't feel as quick as my Mustang does, but it's probably also because I'm not used to this transmission and can't launch it the way that I'm used to the Mustang. But man, this actually has some get up and go. And right now, let's see, because we don't have that overdrive. Where do the RPM land at 60 miles an hour? 24, 2400 yeah. 2, RPM, that's not that bad at all. You don't really need that overdrive transmission. And do you really buy a Corvette for miles per gallon? Not really. Now, if you had the overdrive, I believe you could drop your RPMs to about 15, 1600, give or take. And I have heard, I have not verified this, I have heard people getting 21 to 25 miles a gallon highway in one of these cars with the overdrive. But who cares? You drive a Corvette. You don't. You know. You don't do it for that reason at all. Now let's see over here. I'm a second gear right now, and I got space. Let's see what the warning is on this thing. about this is I don't know how fast I was going officer no they cheated the system because the digital readout actually reads out more than that so Corvette you sly sly dog <laughs> Chevrolet uh 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 uh, uh. <laughs> yeah it does go there is three digits on that speedo I can see it from here yeah if, that's you, if you hit a hundred it would show so Man, yeah, this is this is fun. I would love to do it again, but I'm in the wrong lane. <laughs> Besides, I don't want to burn too much of this guy's gas. Well, you got to remember, 1985. That's all you got to remember the whole time you're driving this car. Because I personally know people with, you know, late 60s Camaros, Chevelles, Novas, those kinds of things, and I know that they spend 25, 30 grand plus on putting disc brakes, on putting fuel injection, rack and pinion steering, you know, ABS, all those kinds of things, and guess what? All C4s, all C4s have them. And for under 10K, you can get it, and you don't have to do, you know, a thing of work at all. You just, it's there, it's ready. Man, I just love this thing. Here's the thing, when I, when I think of C4s, I think that they spent 90% of their time, energy, and money on performance. Okay, so if you compare C3s to C4s, they are mechanically superior in every single way. The part that they didn't spend too much time on is what they look like. Now, in the C4's defense, if you look at an equivalent era Porsche, I mean anything, you know, any GM product, Fords, Porsches, everybody was obsessed with blocky shapes and digital crap. Camaros, I mean, yeah, Mustangs, even. And Mustangs, everything was square. Yeah. And I think that as much crap as people give C4s for styling, guess what? They've survived the best when it comes to still looking okay. So, that's my opinion. Other people have plenty of other opinions about it. But what, what do you think? No, I think, I think you're completely right about it. These cars <laughs> stood the test of time for sure, you know? I like the way they look because I'm a kid of the 80s, you know. I love the DeLorean and kind of see parts of the DeLorean come back with that wedge shape that this car has. I just, I think that while the C3 looked a lot better, it more has to do with personal preference. If you're a kid of the 80s and you saw these cars everywhere, I mean, A-Team, Face, he drove a white Corvette, red stripe on the side. Basically just like this, just different color interior. Exactly. And talk about Fox bodies, just one rolled up right here. <laughs> one thing you do have to remember is that this Corvette did what you saw it did with stock exhaust. It's basically a stock engine. It's got iron heads on it. You know, there's no kind, there, all the smog equipment's still on it. It's got stock air induction. I mean, it's all stock. Everything is stock. the one thing that I love about these cars. Even if you were to buy a 1984 model with the different 
fuel injection. There's still a ton of parts you can get for them to get them up to great levels of power. But the L98 engine started at 230 horsepower and went all the way up to 245 until it was replaced by the LT1 motor. It's just crazy numbers for a car that is that old. And you get all that performance out of a car that, you know, it's now 20, 30 years old, depending on which one you get. And the prices on these cars are great. If you're a college kid and you got $10,000 to spend, you got two choices. Number one, you can play it safe. Get yourself this boring old import and be completely fine. Or you can make the choice that I would personally make, get one of these, spend less than $10,000 and have money left for maintenance because, you know, it is 30 years old. And, you know, if you're stupid, you can always put an exhaust on it or headers. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping you from doing that either. It's great. Mileage, you know, who cares? It's a V8. get one of these, one of these earlier C4s for way less than $10,000. So, and, and why wouldn't you? Besides, you know, you go into high school in a Honda, then you're just the kid that has that import, whatever. You go into high school in a Corvette, then you're the kid that drives a Corvette that drives an American icon. Pull that, pull that knob. Watch the headlights. That's <laughs> awesome. That is the best, dude. <laughs> Okay, that's another function that you you just need to get one of these for is the pop-up headlights. It is so awesome. How they just turn out yep. from right in front of you is just amazing. See, the, the C3s had ones that just flipped up. So you see them, they just go thunk, like that. These ones actually are reverse, so the back flips forward. Yeah, and then it's it crazy. Back. It goes yeah. like, whoosh. yeah. I can't. It, that looks so cool. It looks just as awesome going up <laughs> as it does going down. older car it's gonna rattle it's gonna do all that kind of stuff I'll but tell you what except that rattles a lot less than it used to <laughs> this dash used to be not attached and it would go da -da 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 -da. and so when I replaced the cluster I noticed that the guy who had ripped that cluster out in the first place he broke all the mounting tab so I had to re I had to oh, reattach man. everything that's but crazy to give a shout out to the viewers of the Dutch Texan I actually have seven videos of me doing work on this car so you can see me work on it from basically getting it home until this point right now. When I got it, it barely ran, the wheels almost fell off, it wouldn't, you know, I, I did plenty of stuff to it. So if you guys want to, you can uh, take a look at those, tell me what you think about them. It's good stuff. Yeah, and the other thing that is not stock on this car are the wheels. There's ZR1 replica wheels on this car, and it actually makes this car look so much different, you know? It was kind of dated with the old wheels, but, you know, because I'm a sap, I like the old wheels. <laughs> you know, it is what it is <laughs> when it comes down to that. But the newer wheels definitely give it a bunch of attitude that is all positive. And another thing, now it's 275, and that's part of the reason why I could take that corner the way that I did, because it just grips to the road. These cars are born to run, born to handle, and just that V8, man. You get all that torque. You can be so lazy. Just cruise around. And if you want to go at it, third gear, 2200 RPMs, give it a little go, and there you go. You know, instantly, you, work, you get put in your seat. It's very, very touchy on the gas. As soon as you get on it, it instantly injects the fuel. It's not gradual at all. And when you lift off the gas, it pretty much starts slowing down right away. I kind of like that though. That's my Mustang. Car. That's old car feel right there. My Mustang doesn't do that. My Mustang, it's like an automatic. You, you lift off the gas and it takes a while for it to start slowing down. This, you really have that mechanical connection with the car and I love it. Engine braking, if I was used to this car, I could probably read and write with this thing. I kid you not. It drives so well. And even though the transmission is kind of odd, as soon as you get used to it, I bet it could bang gears like the best of them. This is great. Final conclusion on the car, you just gotta get one of these. 
prices are probably at the lowest they are ever. I have a feeling that over the next couple of years, the prices on these Corvettes are gonna go up, especially the later models when they got the six speeds in 89. Just, just, just gotta like get one of these. And these brakes are pretty All darn new. good. New pads, new rotors, new mass and new brake fluid. Ready to go. Perfect.